I know we're a couple of minutes late. I wanted to uh, thank you all for trekking over to uh, this side of town um, and coming over to Springs Window Fashions for installment two of a Manufacturing Works campaign. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Josh Fassel. I run the Dane County School Consortium. Um, and we are partnering on this project with the Workforce Development Board under Danica's leadership, um, as well as with Madison School District with Sherry. Um, so thank you for joining us for those of you who are teachers to the area. So um, first I'm going to introduce you to Katie Rickley and then we're going to have I think two presentations and a little tour of the, of the plant. All right, thank you. Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Katie Rickley, I'm the employee relations manager here at Springs Window Fashions. And I am not going to be doing the presentation or the tour because I want you to hear it from the experts. Um, and so that is going to be, yeah. Mike Monica and Ryan Griffin, they are the leaders of our uh, middle manu Middleton Manufacturing area here. So, take it away, guys. Okay. Uh, first of all, welcome to Springs Window Fashions. Uh, glad you guys took time out of your schedule to come and visit with us today. Uh, how many people know about Springs Window Fashions in here? Raise your hand. Okay. How many people would know us as Graber? Oh, also. Okay. So that's the thing is, I think as we talk about uh, getting out in the community, I think uh, we've been here actually uh, in the Middleton area in Dane County, uh, obviously for <coughs> quite a few years. I think if you go back though, when you talk to a lot of people, uh, many people will remember us as basically Graber instead of Springs Window Fashions. And I think even today, uh, we do fly a little bit under the radar uh, within the Madison area, Dane County. Uh, in that I think as we start talking about our business a little bit, people are a little bit surprised kind of who we are, how actually large we are. Uh, maybe not necessarily specific in this site, although we do have a pretty decent sized presence here, but really the size of the company that we are uh, really across North America. So um, company-wise, uh, you know, we talked about our tagline here. Uh, we'll mention this as we kind of go through this presentation. If I get long with it, just somebody cut me out and tell me to minimize it and I'll do it. But we talked about best experience. For those of you that drove in today, you probably saw it on our sign out front. Uh, best experience really, if you want me to stand still, I, well, sorry, I didn't know I was being taped. Usually for safety meetings, I'll actually walk around a little bit. But um, best experience, really what that means is anybody that comes into contact with our company. So it starts with our associates. Uh, we basically believe in providing the best experience for our associates. Basically being a uh, great place to work. Uh, you know, in addition to being a good employer for them, you know, having you know decent wages, decent benefits, uh, but then being a good place to work. So being a good place to work is different from being a good employer. And that being a good place to work is, okay, so do you have fulfilling work? Uh, is it a safe environment? Do we have processes set up so you don't come in and you feel like you know, you're know you set up for failure every day? Those types of things. So we're trying to draw that distinction between being a, you know, a good place to work, actually a good place to work versus being an employer of choice. So um, as we go to the next slide, talking a little bit about us, uh, again, this is some of this is marketing material, so if I flub it up, I'm operations, not marketing, so if I don't sell it the right way, you'll have to excuse me. But, Really, uh, we've been around quite a long time. I think as a company, uh, I think we're probably going on 80 plus years in Middleton. Uh, so really what we primarily do for products is we make custom window treatments. That's really kind of what we hang our hat on. So as you look around in the room that you're in right now, uh, you can kind of tell we've, this isn't really our best idea of a training room, but we've kind of grown so much over the last couple of years this is really kind of the only place where we can bring people in from the outside to actually train on our products because our old training room we actually had to create and convert to office space. So you'll see some of the products up on some of the different boards that we have here. Different shutters that we have, sliding panels, again custom made, uh, specific for that particular window opening. Uh, we do different you know, blinds, vertical blinds, say for patio uh, windows and doors. Uh, horizontal wood blinds, pleated shades, different things like that, uh, kind of throughout uh, North America. And we sell under a variety <coughs> of different brand names. You can see here, uh, Meco is primarily for the commercial, so like major office buildings, hotels, hospitality, restaurants, major jobs, apartment buildings, skyscrapers, different things like that. 
Sunsetter is another brand that we have in our portfolio that we sell. Typically, if you are up, uh, is this group, I think I heard all of kind of teachers. Mm -hmm. So if you're upgrading papers at one o'clock in the morning, you see a commercial come on for Sunsetter audience, that's us, that's our company. It's one of the companies that we actually own. So those audience that basically will come out from your house and basically kind of retract in and out. We do that. And then basically kind of our, uh, we, what we call our core brand name, Valley Engraver. Uh, and we also sell quite a bit under private label accounts. So on a daily basis, we probably do throughout our network roughly, it's about 35,000 custom lines every single day that we work. That's three, 35 with three zeros behind it. So it's roughly around six and a half, seven million custom lines every single year. And when I say custom, they are custom in the fact that if you have a window opening that is that wide by that tall, and you want it in this color of blue, that's what we do. If you want a window to make three shades, cover those three windows, three separate shades for each of those windows, you want it in that color of white, that's what we do. 35,000 of those every single day throughout our network, okay? So, uh, again, it's a little bit of a tagline here. I won't go into it, you know. Our mission is to be the leading provider of fashionable, fashionable and functional, high-quality window treatments that represent value to our customers. We set the standard for total quality and superior products through fashion leadership. So, typically, we try to be, I don't want to say necessarily cutting edge, but we don't try to have materials that maybe looked really good, you know, 10 years ago, we try to be kind of more uh, in tune with the time, both from a color perspective, as well as some of our products. Uh, not only they perform kind of a functional perspective, uh, but they're also, we have products that perform kind of a, uh, we'll call it a uh, heat conservation or kind of your uh, energy conservation, keeping, you know, sun out, keeping warm air in. Uh, but, so the next slide, uh, again, where are we located? We have roughly about 15 locations uh, throughout North America. Uh, as we talked about here in Middleton, Wisconsin, this is the corporate headquarters for Springs. Uh, so uh, facility-wise, we have roughly at this facility about 500 associates, round numbers. And that's broke out roughly by about 60% of them, office people, and then 40% the remaining is kind of in operations, working with Ryan and I. Uh, this is actually one of our largest facilities here, and when we actually go out on the tour, you'll actually have an opportunity to see some of the things that we do out there today. Um, how many people have watched the show, How It's Made, on TV? Okay, so I think when you actually go out today, you'll, when you see some of the things that we do, we always kind of say when we do tours, uh, some of the operations that we do, you kind of look at and say, wow, that could actually be on that show. You'll have an opportunity to see some of those things that we do today, but this facility, it's the largest one in our network. Uh, we operate 24 hours a day, five days a week in operations. So uh, there's different uh, operations that we have. Primarily what we do here is we make most of the components, the parts and pieces that go into blinds. So the final assembly, we don't do that here. That's actually done at a lot of our other locations. So as you can see, uh, we are uh, roughly about 7,000 associates total throughout all those facilities. Uh, we have roughly about 5,000 different points of distribution, meaning where our products are sold. So if you go into around here, you probably probably would be very familiar if you go to Home Depot or Menards. Uh, if you look up under like Valley, uh, at Menards it would be under Window Images, which is a private label. Uh, we also sell a lot through different designers and decorators. So maybe. You know, if you go to Home Depot or Menards, you probably have an idea of, okay, that's what I want. I know exactly what I want, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, it, do it yourself, right? Uh, designers and decorators, we sell to them as well. Uh, the people that kind of go through that channel, those are people we call them DIF, and do it for me, instead of do it yourself. So, uh, variety of methods of uh, distribution for products. And then kind of from the standpoint of in the community, we are involved in a lot of the communities uh, that we uh, participate in. And you can see here that uh, through the years we've different, uh, donated roughly over a million dollars to different charities. Uh, locally here, uh, we've actually, I believe, the Middleton facility has helped build, I want to say it's like four or five Habitat for Humanity homes with our associates here. I want to say it was going back two years ago, we actually did a uh, pre-build out in our parking lot. 
So instead of us kind of going to a job site and getting in each other's way and pounding nails on each other's feet, we basically they brought in all the equipment and we basically set up the walls, did all the framing and everything like that, and then they just ended up taking it away. So it was just basically shifts of people. We ran in and we were able to build frames. I think it was for, I think it was like for three or four homes that they took out of here. So next slide, um, talking a little bit about our culture. Um, you know, as from an operations perspective, the culture that we talk about at a high level, we talk about wellness, um, again, having healthy employees, and it also starts with our safety. So when we start kind of each day, each shift around here, from Ryan and I will go out into, onto the floor and talk to our associates. Typically what we're talking about is safety, quality, and then we get into things like delivery. Really the first thing we always start out every day is around safety kids are actually involved with those uh, so it's not you know just top down we actually try to believe uh, as part of our best experience is getting our associates involved so if there is an issue they're part of the solution with us on that um, and then you know part of it is also recognizing you know achievements and celebrating successes uh, we talked about the habitat homes that we did and then another thing that is also uh, kind of throughout, I'll call it part of our DNA here, is kind of our, I guess I would call it our commitment to the environment. You'll see that uh, as you walk through the facility today, there's several different areas where the amount of recycling that we do. So if we bring in, you'll see any type of operations or manufacturing, whenever you get product in, and probably see this in your house, especially this time of year when you get in a bunch of boxes from Amazon, what do you do with all those boxes, right? Well, businesses are no different. They generate a lot of waste. So we get in a lot of boxes, we recycle all that. We also, with a lot of our processes, we also use uh, quite a bit of water to help cool a lot of our plastic molds, etc. We have an in-house uh, closed loop cooling system. So basically, we're not bringing in a ton of new water, we're just recycling the old water coming in and using that. Uh, so there's a lot of different things like that that we do um, in this facility. Um, and not just at this facility, it's at other facilities as well. We have a facility up in Great Lake, Michigan. So these wood lines here, uh, the frames on these wood lines, all of these parts, that's real wood. We actually, where that actually started coming into our Great Lake facility was from a tree that was harvested up in, you know, northern Michigan, northern Wisconsin, Minnesota. And that raw lumber is basically brought into our facility and we basically will make those louvers and then when they make them and shape them once any time you ever cut anything right with wood what do you generate sawdust what do you do with sawdust after you generate it a lot of cases it probably goes in the garbage right in our grayling facility we take the sawdust we generate first of all we use it to heat our kilns to actually dry the wood and that actually is what heats our building they haven't had to pay and they're in grayling michigan very close to the upper peninsula of michigan I don't think they've had a heating bill probably, I, I, I don't, as long as I've been here, and I've been here quite a few years, they've never had a heating bill. Okay, I better get Ryan up here then as well. So here's our brands real quick. You can see all the different brands that we have. Um, you know, I won't go through all the detail. We kind of talked about some of them before. And then talking a little bit about, next slide. Again, more things that we do for our associates, uh, not only our associates, but also out in the community. Uh, we've done different, you know, adopt a family. Uh, we recognize safety kind of, again, throughout the year, kind of coursing throughout the year. Next slide. Uh, so I'll let Ryan kind of talk. We've talked a little bit about uh, some of the different positions here. I think what you're probably most curious about is, okay, positions come in, where can people go, what do they do? Yep, thanks, Mike. Uh, so as Mike said, we are 24-5, so we run Sunday night through uh, Friday night. We offer shifts first, second, or third. We've got openings on all of those shifts. We are flexible in working with people. We've got a couple of people right now that have had to adjust their schedule or change from one shift to another based on going back for further schooling. We always try to work with associates as much as we can on that. Some of the entry-level type positions we have and we'll give a tour in a few minutes here, but uh, assembly is a basic in-feeder to us, so it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using your hands a lot, uh, sitting down assembly componentry that we make and then ship out. Um, we've got entry-level positions in our pleating area, in our injection molding area, and then our warehouse as well. And we do provide training 
in all of those areas on all of those jobs for people that come in because we don't expect people to have the experience. Um, oh, and then summer work. We also have had success with that. You know, sometimes it's college kids just looking for something when they're back home for the school year or, you know, high school kids, once they reach 18, I believe it is, um, can come in and work during the summer here. So again, it's a way to pick up 30, 40 hours making better money than you make at McDonald's and you're not doing fast food. Do I have anything against McDonald's? Um, and then from there, we do, there's a lot of advancement opportunities. So you come in, you start at one of those positions, you can then work your way up to a higher level machine operator, um, troubleshooters, we've got a full tool room and maintenance department here, and then also into our team leaders, which are our supervisors on the shop floor, and then uh, also into the office. So ATO modeling, which is computer work, IT again, computer work, and then all kinds of different opportunities here because as Mike said, this is our corporate headquarters. So then just some real life examples. Um, we had someone come in, machine operator, um, went to school for uh, maintenance, went into our maintenance department, and uh, then from there, uh, maintenance technician. Uh, machine operator three, which is a higher level, um, became what we call one of our trainers or quality people in the department and then went into product configuration in the office. Um, another individual, again, started off as a machine operator, team coordinator, team leader, that supervisor type position we talked about, and is now working uh, custom modeling in the office. And then um, another one, Susie started off as an assembler operator, became a machine operator, became a trainer, went into quality for a short period, and she's one of my team leaders, or again, supervisors out on the floor today. So just because someone comes in at one level doesn't mean they're going to stay there long term. We also tell people there's always openings on the board if you need to change shifts or change departments. You know, there's opportunities and we always try to promote from within first. Uh, we do offer comprehensive medical, dental, vision, etc. Tuition reimbursement for individuals going back to school to different levels depending on what the courses are. Uh, very competitive 401k match, uh, paid vacation bonuses, etc. Uh, start off with 10 paid holidays, not so much for the summer help, obviously, that would be a significant portion of it, but a full time associate. And then also, we've got team performance bonus program that we pay out for our shop associates. I think that's it. Any questions for Mike or I? Yeah. 